All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's get our notes up and get right back into it. So yesterday we were talking about deserts. We were talking about the fact that deserts are defined by the low precipitation as opposed to what most people think is, well, deserts are really hot, deserts are sandy. Um, and if you recall, we said that Antarctica is the world's largest desert. And that is, in fact, a cold desert. And then we said the Sahara is the world's largest traditional desert. So sand, hot, desert. Um, what we're going to do is today we're going to actually break down the five types of deserts. All right. And that's going to be your subtropical desert, the rain shadow desert, your coastal desert, your continental interior desert, and then the polar desert. Now, some of these I, I think are, are going to be a little detailed. So try to take time as we go through and not only read the notes, but then, you know, try and engage with what I'm explaining. You might need to go back and watch this a second time or just be ready to have some dialogue with it on Monday. So the first one up here, we have the subtropical desert. And so I think the easiest way would actually be to do a little sketching for you. So we'll come back to this page. Of Sometimes a picture is worth a thousand words. So here, the air of the lower atmosphere flows convectively between the equator and a latitude of about 30 degrees. This is what we call the Hadley cell. Right there, it's a three cell system. We'll just focus right now on the Hadley cell. So the warm moist air rises at the equator. It's gonna drop its precipitation there. And then as it sinks at around 30 degrees north latitude, that cool dry air is gonna get super warm and super dry, right? Because remember sinking air is compressed and therefore, when you compress things, they warm up. So most of the Earth's largest deserts, including the Sahara, the Arabian, the Great Indian, Kalahari, these are going to be located at around 30 degrees of latitude. Now, I just realized that the sketching that I told you I was going to do isn't going to be in order, so now you'll see the sketching. I apologize for that. So let's get ourselves the Earth. All right, so over here, we got a nice little circle of the Earth. Right along the middle, we got the equator. Right, the equator. Remember that that is going to be your zero degrees of latitude. Now, the equator gets the most amount of sunlight, mostly the highest angle of insulation um, annually is striking at the equator, which makes the equator a really warm area. So when we warm things up, they're going to rise. Warm, moist air rises is the, the phrase we like to use. So you create this area of low pressure. Right, low pressure happening over here. And then that warm moist air is gonna rise. It's gonna move either north or south in the upper atmosphere, and then it's gonna sink down. Now, when the warm moist air rises, you're going to have that condensation from the cooling of the air as it expands, which is gonna to lead to cloud formation and eventually precipitation. So if you can just picture here and kind of go back to our discussion earlier this year about meteorology, right? You're going to get your precipitation here. So lots of precipitation happening, dropping its water. Now this dry air that's cool is going to come over 
and it's going to sink back down to the earth. When the air sinks, there's going to be compression. And compression equals heating. So now I had dry air. I had that dry air sink, which is actually going to increase its temperature, which if you again recall, warm air can hold more moisture than cold air. So we're going to take dry air, we're going to heat it up. So now it's going to be like super dry air. And that is going to affect this region right here at about 30 degrees south and 30 degrees north latitude. And that is where our subtropical region is located. So let's go back to those notes. And now you guys can actually see a nice visual of what we're talking about. Right, again, think about where 30 degrees of latitude is going to fall. Right, and when you have that air falling, right, that sinking air heating up right around 30 degrees latitude, then that air is going to move back down toward the equator. And that is r why right up in here is where you have that massive, massive desert. Okay. So enough about the Sahara. We get it. It's huge. What else do you want to tell us, Mr. Readers? Right? So the next one is the rain shadow desert. And the rain shadow effect is when warm, moist air comes off the ocean and then hits a mountain range. Say it again. Warm moist air comes off a, a body of water like the ocean, right? Hits a mountain range and is going to rise up. Now again, when warm moist air rises, it's going to cool. It's going to condense. And then you get precipitation. So on what we call the windward side, the side where the warm moist air is coming from, right? if you look at this image down here, this is the windward side. That's the side that the wind is coming from. You have a lot of precipitation and you have dense vegetation, which is what you can see there. Now, when the air mass makes it over the top of the mountain, it's already dropped its precipitation, so now it's dry air, and it's cold. You've made it to the top of the mountain, you've chilled out. Now you come down on the other side of the mountain, and the air is going to again sink, which is going to cause compression. Compression equals heating. The air becomes hotter, but it's already dry, now it becomes super dry, just like we talked about with the subtropical deserts forming, and that explains why on the leeward side of the mountain range, you're gonna have a desert. So the Sierra Nevada mountain range, the Cascades, great example of rain shadow desert. And then the big island of Hawaii, now, if you want to know a little bit more about the Rain Shadow Desert, there's actually a great YouTube video. Um, the person who put it together actually has like a little Hawaiian shirt, and he, he talks about the, the Cascades, and he also talks about the, the Big Island of Hawaii. So feel free to go check that one out. All right, next we have the Coastal Desert. So... Coastal, going to be next to the ocean. Oceans have currents. So the ocean currents bring cold water along the coastline. And this cooler water that, that's flowing along is going to, in turn, affect the air. So now you're going to have cooler air that isn't going to rise and, and form rain clouds the way that normal warm moist air would be able to do that. 
So in essence, the cold ocean water is preventing rain clouds and precipitation from forming in a particular area. That's what the whole coastal desert's all about. And the Atacama Desert along the west coast of South America is, is said to be the driest place on earth. So you can have deserts. Okay, we had less than 25 centimeters of precipitation. But then you have Atacama, where your precipitation annually can be zero to maybe 0.1 centimeters of precipitation. So it really is an incredibly dry place, but all because of the cold water ocean currents that are, are flowing um, near that particular region. So you guys are like, okay, I get it. Maybe I don't. How about again, pictures worth a thousand words. So here you got that cold water ocean current with the blue arrows coming up um, along the west coast of South America. And you see right there, right in that, that crook or, or the, the armpit over there is the Atacama Desert. And then that's what it actually looks like. So again, we're going to get into landscapes on Monday as far as uh, what different deserts look like. But you guys can see that is a pretty dry location. All right. And next up, we have the Continental Interior Desert. Now, this one I think is pretty self-explanatory. But picture it this way. You got warm, moist water that's coming off the ocean. It's moving across the continent. And as it's doing that, it loses its moisture. And as it, as it moves across the, the continent, it is bringing precipitation, rain, or snow, whatever it might be. And once it's reached kind of the interior region, right, you get a little bit further into the continent, well, you've lost your supply of water and you've already dropped any precipitation that, that you were holding. Now you're just a dry air mass that's moving across. And because you can't produce any rain in that region now, the region becomes a desert. So basically just on the location in the middle region of a continent, you end up with an arid environment, low precipitation, you end up with a desert. And Gobi Desert in Asia, great example. Great example. And then the last one that we got here is a polar desert. And polar desert, kind of self-explanatory, right? We're going to be very cold because we're in the polar region we're up, up at the poles so this is where antarctica is going to play in right so very cold dense air above the polar region holds very little moisture again if we can't make clouds if we don't have enough moisture for precipitation well then you're not going to get high precipitation and your region is going to be described then as arid or as a desert so it's the, the, the low precipitation factor and it really comes back to the air temperature being so cold it really can't hold a lot of moisture to begin with. All right, so let's just recap. Deserts receive an average of less than 25 centimeters of rain each year. Remember that's less than 325 centimeters of snow when we're talking about the cold deserts and therefore it's going to be sparse on vegetation right less than 15 percent of the region having vegetation and then deserts develop in various settings so we talked about the subtropical desert the rain shadow the coastal the continental interior and the polar region.
All right, so that's what I wanted to get through for today. If you haven't done so already, make sure that you've turned in your vocabulary. And I hope you guys have a fantastic three-day weekend. I look forward to seeing you guys on Monday. Take care.